Hi everyone, welcome back to the CompTIA Network Plus course. Physical Network Diagrams. A physical network diagram contains all the physical devices and connectivity paths on your network and should accurately picture how your network physically fits together in glorious detail. Again, I know it seems like overkill, but ideally your network diagram should list a map and map everything you need to completely rebuild your network from scratch if you had to. This is actually what this type of gram is what this type of diagram is designed for. But there's still another physical network diagram variety that includes the firmware revision on all the switches and access points in your network. Remember, besides having your physical network accurately detailed, you must also clearly understand the connections, types of hardware and the firmware revisions. I'm going to say it again. You'll be so happy you have this documentation when troubleshooting. It will prevent much suffering and enable you to fix whatever the problem is so much faster. If you can't diagram everything for some reason, at least make sure all network devices are listed. As I said, physical network diagrams can run from simple hand-drawn models to instantly complex monsters created by software packages like SmartDraw, Visio and AutoCAD. Figure 20.4 shows a simple diagram that most of us could draw by hand and here you go figure 20.5 network diagram with firewalls from smart draw um, for the artistically impaired or if you want a flashier version a uh, figure 20.5 exhibits a more complex physical diagram this is an actual sample from what SmartDraw can do for you. You can get it at www.smartdraw.com. In addition, Microsoft Visio provides many, possibly more of these same functions. My last example, also courtesy of SmartDraw, includes diagrams of hardware racks as revealed in figure 20.6. Don't throw anything at me, but I need to bring up one last thing never forget to mirror any changes you make to your actual network in the networks diagram think of it like an updated snapshot if you give the authorities um, your college buddy's baby picture after he goes missing will that really help people recognize him as well as one um, taken just before he's disappeared because they don't make age progression software for networks. It's smart to just keep things up to date. Um, so here's a figure 20.6 um, hardware rack diagram from SmartDraw. Um, logical network diagrams. Physical diagrams depict how data physically flows from one area of your network to the next but a logical network diagram includes things like protocols configurations addressing schemes access lists firewalls types of applications and so on all things that apply logically to your network figure 20.7 shows what a typical logical network diagram looks like just as you mirror any physical changes you make to the physical network on your physical diagram like adding devices or even just a cable your map logical sorry your map uh, logical changes such as creating a new subnet VLAN or security zone on your logical network diagram and it's equally vital that you keep this also important document up to date um, so here we have figure 20.7 logical network diagram asset management asset management involves tracking all network assets like computers 
routers, switches and hubs through their life cycles. Sorry, through their entire life cycles. Most organizations find it beneficial to utilize asset identification numbers to facilitate this process. The ISO has established standards regarding asset management. The ISO 19770 family consists of four major parts. 19771 is a process related standard that outlines best practice for IT asset management in an organization. 197702 is a standard for machine encapsulation in the form of an XML file known as a SWID tag of inventory data allowing users to easily identify so what software is deployed on a given device. 197703 is a standard that provides a schema for machine encapsulation of entitlements and rights associated with software licenses. The records known as ENTs will describe all entitlements and rights attended to a piece of software and the method for measurement of license entitlement um, consumption. This is still a draft. 1977 Zero 04 allows for standardized reporting of utilization of resources. This is critical when considering complex data center license types and for management of cloud based software and hardware. Software as a service or SaaS and infrastructure as a service or IAAS. This is all still a draft. Um, IP utilization. Documenting the current IP addressing scheme can also be highly beneficial, especially when changes are required. Not only is this really helpful to new technicians, it's very helpful when identifying IP addressing issues that can lead to future problems. In many cases, IP addresses are configured over a long period of time with no real thought of planning on the macro level. Current and correct documentation can help administrators identify discontinuous networks where subnets of a major network are separated by another major network that can cause routing protocol issues. Proper IP address design can also facilitate summarization which makes routing tables smaller, speeding the routing process. None of these wise design choices can be made without proper IP address documentation. Vendor documentation. Vendor agreements often have beneficial clauses that when that were negotiated during the pro during the purchase process. Many also contain critical details concerning SLAs, which are service level agreements, and deadlines for warranties. These documents need to be organized and stored um, safety for future reference. Creating a spreadsheet or some other form of tracking documentation that alerts you of upcoming dates of interest can be a huge advantage. Network monitoring. Identifying performance issues within a network is only one of the reasons to perform structured monitoring. Security issues also require constant monitoring. In the following sections, we'll look into both types of monitoring and cover some of the best practices and guidelines for success. Baselines. In networking, baselines often refer to the standard level of performance of a certain device or to the normal operation capacity for your whole network. For instance, a specific server's baseline describes norms for factors like how busy its processors are, how much memory it uses and how much data usually goes through an NIC 
at a given time a network baseline delimits the amount of bandwidth available and when for networks and network devices baselines include information about four key components processor memory hard disk or stored subsystem network adapter or subsystem after everything is up and running it's a good idea to establish performance baselines on all vital devices and for your network in general to do this measure things like network usage at three different strategic times to get an accurate assessment for instance peak usage usually happens around 8 a.m monday through friday or whenever most people log in to the network in the morning after hours or on uh, weekends it's often when usage is low knowing these values can help you troubleshoot bottlenecks or determine why certain system resources are more limited than they should be knowing what your baseline is can even tell you if someone's complaints about the network running like a slug are really valid nice it's a good way to know that you can use network monitoring software to establish baselines even some server operating systems come with software to help with network monitoring which can help find baselines as well in my experience it's wise to re-baseline network performance at least once a year and always pinpoint new performance baselines after any major network upgrade to your network's infrastructure processes when monitoring baselines there are processes that can be used to enhance the process in this section we'll look at one particularly helpful process log reviewing while re regular log reviewing is always recommended anyway log review could have benefits when monitoring baselines in some cases you may be able to identify a non-compliant device by entries in its log or in the logs um, of infrastructure devices um, patch management in some cases applying patches especially device driver updates can be problematic issues can include the device no longer working loss of some key functionality or generation of odd error messages when this occurs you may want to make use of the procedure covered in the next section rollback while rollback is a general term that applies to reversing any operation about device drivers it means to remove the new driver by going back to using the previous driver this is typically an available option if the last driver you use is a driver you want to which you want to roll back so i'm going to it here today for this video if you like listening please consider like sharing and subscribing thank you